Hello, my lovelies. I'm Ginny O, the author with no last name, and I'm also a dev editor, a game dev, and today I want to talk about branding of Bitcraft. I don't know whether or not you've heard about Bitcraft yet. The trailer came up in my recommended, and I didn't really think anything about it after watching it, but it's gaining some traction, so let's talk about the branding and presentation and a few of my concerns about Bitcraft versus Palea. I'm not going to do a one-on-one -on -one comparison to Palea because I don't think there really is at the moment. The main question I need answered right now is what is Bitcraft going to give me as a game that I can't get in other games now and upcoming? including Palea. I don't think they've answered that question yet, and it's sorely a question that needs answering. So what is Bitcraft? Bitcraft, according to the official site, is a community sandbox MMORPG with an emphasis on city building and social strategy over one-on-one -on -one combat, and utilizes elements from survival games, city builders, role-playing games, and strategy games. And then the trailer pretty much showed us everything you can do in any sandbox RPG. So um, what they're, I believe, trying to go for in different is they want it to be a city versus city trading type of competition and cooperation in a procedurally generated world built out of hexagons or at least according to the Discord fact. So let's go over our elements of a brand. Genre, target market, visual aesthetic, core value slash theme, fantasy tagline, and the mechanics to fit the theme. All right, right off the bat, I'm really going to call this Isekai. You wake up in a world and you have to survive. There doesn't seem to be any real fantasy element here with magic or anything despite the visuals. The target market is the person in an MMORPG who is the one running around cutting down trees in RuneScape. Without one-on-one -on -one combat, I can't say this is targeted at the actual usual sandbox PvP MMORPG audience, or even the survival game action RPG audience like Valheim. If you like building things and running around, and I assume there will be achievements in this game. This is the game for you. This is for the builders, the achievers, and the explorers. And they want to, the social aspect of it. So the social networkers of the MMORPG world, and anyone who enjoys a survival game, assuming there are enemies to um, survive. Without one-on-one -on -one combat, this may or may not cut out the biggest issue with sandbox PvP MMOs, the Griefers. There are two definitions for Griefers, and in this case I'm talking about the ones who get themselves up to a high level and then go bully the low level characters by killing them and stealing their stuff as soon as they can. Those griefers are the sandbox PvP killers because no one wants to play and get up to that level unless there's some type of masochist. And the sandbox PvP game doesn't have any mechanics to encourage cooperation outside of the goodness of a player's heart. So sandbox PvP games die. Removing that element may encourage the longevity of Bitcraft. However, they'll have to add in cooperation and challenge mechanics to make up for that easily exploitable competition mechanic. They are changing the dynamics of the competition, so they're going to have to adjust the mechanics of the game to fit the new city versus city competition. Now, the visual aesthetic of this game managed to create a shout out to a melange of things while remaining somewhat unique. This isn't Wizard with a Gun, basically copying Vivi from Final Fantasy IX with a bit of Helsing for Spice. Yes, I said it. So when looking at Bitcraft, I see a lot of influences, including the obvious Journey, Flower, Final Fantasy's Vivi, I see some Kingdom Hearts, I see Miyazaki, and there is something about the face mask that I've seen elsewhere and I can't place it. Girl genius, maybe? 
it's either steampunk or sci-fi, ghost in the shell, maybe if you want to drive me crazy, this is the way to do it. And the style is rather low poly. I'm hesitant to go Zelda Breath of the Wild again. This seems to hit a the colorful but low poly trend. Depending on your exposure to different game genres, Bitcraft is either going to feel really fresh or it's going to feel comforting in that I have seen the style in other things and this is a new way to put it together. And depending on how you feel about low poly type games, it's going to decide whether or not this style is for you. Everything is being built on hexagons. Yes, hexagons. Even the little icon on their webpage and for their YouTube is a hexagon with a diamond on it. It's a little fantasy with the floating unicorn sprite that looks like it's going to be a directional indicator, and a little sci-fi with the circuit board hexagon patterns, the mysterious hexite crystal, because why not go all the way, and ruins with lost technology. They are using humanoids, but not humans, so that's interesting and different. That's where I'm seeing the Kingdom Hearts is in the player character aspects, reminding me of the little black heartless shadows with the white eyes. Let's address the elephant in the room. The name. Bitcraft. Everybody has jumped on board with this kind of being a bad name. The reactions I've seen are, this is bad, you should probably change it. Except now might be too late because they've had all this publicity and they have a domain name for Bitcraft. With the talk about how Bitcraft is a bad name, they might have just cemented that name as the game's name going forward because they try to change it now. It's going to be, oh, you mean Bitcraft. <laughs> the issue with Bitcraft is it brings up Bitcoin and Minecraft. And I think the Minecraft associations were intentional. I don't think that Bitcoin was. I think what they were looking for, given the circuitry imagery in some of the almost robot-like designs of the very few NPCs we've seen, I think they were going for bit as in 32-bit or 64-bit, something technology and computer related. Except no one thinks about that anymore and instead thinks Bitcoin, which was named off of bits, the smallest increment of data on a computer, the zero or one value, which do they even teach that anymore? Question, or is that a computer nerd thing? Like Palea, they came up with their own font for their logo, which is 100% the thing to do. The font gives the pseudo old-fashioned feel to it with the dot in the middle of the C and the extra squares coming off the T's, and it has a KOA tent for the A. Have you ever been to a KOA campground? Okay, first off, a KOA is an American campground corporation. They run campgrounds all across the USA. They've got over 500 of them, and they're known to be cheap, short-term, they usually have shower facilities and sometimes a playground and usually a type of office area maybe with an area of table games like air hockey and ping pong for the kids they're one step up from staying at a state park or national park campground and their logo is a tent it's a tp tent with a little black dot on the top of the tp for i don't know maybe for smoke or visual interests and that's what the A in Bitcraft reminds me of, the same type of triangular we're going camping tent of KOA. I know this is like the weirdest thing to know. What I'm getting out of the logo is we're going camping and we're going to craft some stuff a bit at a time while we do it. I'm not going to call this the most genius name ever. I think they're trying to associate the feelings you get from Minecraft a little too much. The only thing about it that's good is it's given them some buzz. No such thing as bad publicity, eh? So the core values seem to be explore and build. A new world of adventures for you to shape is again every sandbox MMORPG or survival action RPG ever. The tagline is become a leader, build your empire. Okay, well if every player is becoming a leader and building an empire, we have issues. They mentioned you can hone skills in different areas and master those skills as you practice them. They are saying every character is a blank slate and the parts of the game you spend time in are the skills you'll develop. Which is all well and good, I guess. But that is going to require a huge, varied player base to provide the type of community they want to create cities and empires from scratch. 
here is where I'm iffy. Maintaining a player base in a sandbox game is an entirely different challenge than a game with story and lore. It's ten times as difficult to get and keep a player base in sandbox long term. People come in, fulfill their goals for however many hours, and stop. Palea has in contrast at least promised a story, so players are far more likely to stick around long term for story. I mean, I recently bought Big Farm Story, got to the end of the story in about 30 hours, stuck around for another 20 hours upgrading my farm and getting the skins I wanted, and now I'm waiting for the next update, hoping you know there's either more cosmetics or, well, story. Since it's in the title. I mean, I got my money's worth out of it. I just don't know how much story they're going to add to the game before they ask for more money. Looking at the team at Clockwork Labs and looking at the investors, my conclusion is they are trying to duplicate what happened with EVE Online, creating a commerce-focused competitive MMORPG. Where, from my understanding, what happened with EVE Online happened pretty much by accident, with an extremely involved and dedicated player base. I don't know if it can be duplicated under controlled conditions. If you look at the team, they're very proud of being a team of engineers. They're working in the Unity engine, which I hope is up for this task. They have 10 people, half of them are in engineering, I'm hoping one of those engineers knows about servers. Their music contractor also directed and edited the trailer for their game. So there is someone very important missing on this team, and I noticed this on the Ashes of Creation team too. It's a writer, or a narrative designer in GameSpeak. So without a writer, and without a story, they have suddenly created ten times or more the amount of work for themselves in terms of making a game. Because, when your game is self-directed, in terms of questing and adventure, what becomes a hundred times more important is the ability to customize your character and whatever you can build, or make, or do in the world. Let's take Mystic Riders as an example. We want to be able to give our players housing. At the same time, you want to keep the amount of art and assets you need reasonable for budgeting purposes. We have eight districts, so I came up with eight themes, and these themes we hope have enough crossover and we can hopefully build stuff modularly, throw in the ability to choose patterns and the textures of building materials like brick or stone or clapboard. Within those basic eight themes, we hope to be able to cover a rather large group of players. And we have story to keep them occupied. Now, take out the story and make building the focus. You have to magnify those visual themes and mix and match buildings and decorations and clothing for the characters and everything times ten or more because players in order to show off are going to want to try and make unique towns, unique cities, and different themes and designs. There is nothing more demanding than a group of people who have nothing else to do but build to their heart's content. I mean, look at Minecraft, or Sims, or even Stardew Valley's modding communities. I know Second Life had a modding community. Animal Crossing has a huge modding community. There are people in those communities that make livings off of doing custom content for other players in those communities. Unless they allow modders to create custom, basically cosmetic content for their game, their art budget with a 10 person and one independent contractor studio is going to be go through the roof. And I feel really bad for the concept artists and 3D artists attached to the studio. It is a lot of work, and even if you love doing it, it can be overwhelming. Now, we haven't seen enough of the mechanics or the buildings to know what they're really going to be like. The thing is, right now, Without story to keep you interested, the mechanics are 100% grind. A lot of games do come down to grind eventually. Making your game grind right off the bat is a huge hurdle. Casual and grind aren't really something that go well together. 
Players of casual games want something to be working for, and hardcore players who are the type who at least pretend they enjoy grind no one really enjoys grind are there for the end game type of content, which is the big competition stuff, aren't the same player base. The upside is Bitcraft is in a pre-alpha stage where they're inviting people to play and potentially give them feedback. My feedback is right now, right off the bat, is hire yourself a writer and get in a story because if Amazon doesn't think they can make a sandbox PvP only game work and make a profit, then I'm not sure why any other studio thinks they can do it. I don't take out the procedurally generated too. I think they're trying for the no man's sky, we love random people, and I'm, I'm not sure how that's really going to work in an MMORPG, where according to their Discord fact, they aren't going to allow fast travel. Random games work for games set up for randomness, and unless they're putting in hubs where players spawn in and can meet other players, then I don't know how this is going to work. As Kira TV pointed out, Life is Feudal tried this random spawning without fast travel, and while Life is Feudal is pretty much gone because people couldn't meet up with their friends easily. So... And... Josh Strife Hayes has pointed out New World is having a hard time with players who join together not spawning together on the map. So if you want to play with your friends and you don't randomly start in the same zone, then while well, there are issues in getting to your friends. So you, you are going to lose players who want to play together and can't without extreme workarounds or hours of playtime. No one wants that. Let people play with their friends, the social part of massive multiplayer online. Learn from other games, please. And we have address lists in Mystic Riders. You want to play with your friends? Choose the same server out of a list and take the quiz so you end up in the same district. Fancy that. The downside is, Bitcraft is in a pre alpha stage where they're inviting a lot of people to come in and play. And like with New World in their pre alpha then alpha, unless you have a lot of content, aka cosmetics and or story, created and planned for the actual launch, this becomes the Serenity movie problem. The people who want to play your game slash watch the movie came to the special previews, did all the content slash saw the movie, and have no need to come again on opening weekend. I'm not really a fan of the pre-alpha type test phases being so hugely public to try and generate hype. I hope they do what Paleo did and choose a small percentage of those who apply to test things for them. There is time and room to change things and add layers to the game going forward. I mean, look at New World. Between the pre-alpha testing and the actual alpha, they changed the entire vision of the game from a sandbox PvP to a more theme park story MMORPG with PvP elements. The world Clockwork Labs has created is ripe for a story. A story to answer the questions of what, why, and how. Why are there ruins? What is this lost technology? Who made it? Why is it lost? How did it come to be? And how does this fit with the core values and theme of the game? Or does there need to be a core value and theme added or conveyed better? For instance, according to their blog, Paleo's words for their core value and theme are feeling valued and true sense of belonging. And I didn't really get that from their trailer or their website. Cozy, yes. I mean, the ideas of valued and belonging can be associated with cozy, I suppose. I didn't get it from the presentation. Maybe because they didn't really put up any of the story and how it is going to go to other than there is story. And we want you to be part of our community. Belonging and feeling valued is part of community, yes? Okay, now how are they going to work that into the story? I don't know. But I'm going to give them time to work it out, be I guess, because they did promise it, at least. Journey worked as a game, because Journey had a very set goal. Get to the mountain. The same with Flower. It was get to the city. In an MMORPG, there still needs to be a goal. If the goal is to create a community to build a city, well, once you do that, then what? This becomes life. Not fun. Anyways, as a visual brand, 
Bitcraft seems to be onto something. It's nice to look at, it's relatively different without it being too different. The name got misunderstood and it's too close to Minecraft. Because it's a sandbox community MMORPG supposedly, I have serious questions about if there will be enough content or enough reasons for players to stick around and keep the game going without there being a story and lore behind the world. A lot of studios want to create worlds for players to, well, play in and seem to forget there as an interactive story medium, games need, well, story. There needs to be some type of heart for all these mechanics and grind and city building to coalesce around. It's nice looking, building can be fun, but there's literally no reason for me, as a person who loves story or any other PvE player, to even start playing. So, if as a brand, you're trying to capture this casual social player and don't mention story, you failed on a basic research level. Even the trailer has the inciting incident of the meteor shower and the tower lighting up for the player to take off into the unknown. So you take off, find the tower, and then what? If that's the extent of the incident, build a new town and then go looking for the next tower? Boring. So, while other content creators are trying to lump Palea and Bitcraft into the same new genre of MMORPGs, I'm not going to be one of them, and if Bitcraft gave me even a hint there might be a story or a line on the website with a narrative designer on the team to back it up of, there's a great story we want to tell, I'd give them more faith. Great world, decent logo, iffy name, and a target market that needs some broadening to grab that casual player base. Three quarters of the way there? Remember, a list of game mechanics is not a brand. What I'm missing here is what fantasy wish fulfillment is this game making that I can't get in other games. So while Bitcraft looks nice, I wish they had a stronger presentation with a story. Otherwise, I'm going to seriously consider picking up Valheim and go play Jenny again. I haven't played that in a while. Maybe I should. Thanks for listening. Take care of yourselves, my lovelies. Bless, and as always, I'll see you in the next video.